Hey guys, Nick from KN Tech, welcome back. So today I'm going to be having a go at building a NAS. A NAS is a network attached storage. It's, a big, it's basically a big drive or a collection of hard drives that sits on your network and acts like an external hard drive for you to be able to store things on from your computer. You can use it across multiple platforms, so if you have a PC or a Mac, or if you're on your own network, you can even use it from an Android or an iOS device. So I'm going to need a few things to build this. Firstly, I'm going to need a case to put it in, and I've got this old tower case, which you can see right here. It's a really old tower, and I was going to use this to cut up and make another one of my test benches. By the way, if you haven't seen that video, I'll stick a link to that up in the corner. Secondly, I'm going to need a motherboard and a CPU with some memory. And this is what I'm going to use to actually attach all my network to all my hard drives to. And this is actually going to share this as a single device across my network. Big thanks to Clive from Ashford PC Builders. He hooked me up with the motherboard and the CPU for this build. I'll put a link to their website in the description below. It's a great site if you're looking for a business or a gaming PC. Great specs, great prices, and also they ship throughout the country. So he hooked me up with this micro ATX motherboard with an FX41 or 4300 quad-core CPU, which should be perfect for doing the job. What I'm also going to need is some hard drives. So firstly, I've got a, an SSD, which I'm going to store the operating system on. The operating system I'm going to be using is TrueNAS. And again, I'll put a link to that in the description below. I've also got five Western Digital one terabyte laptop drives, which I've recovered from doing various jobs over the years. And I'm going to use these in there, which is going to give me a total of five terabytes. I'm also going to need a power supply. And I'm going to need a keyboard and mouse and a network cable to plug it into my network. So let's get started guys and we'll see how actually everything hangs together and we'll see how well we can actually make this work. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna take all this equipment and I'm gonna put it in here. I'm not gonna bother showing you guys how to do this because it's just straightforward as screwing the main board in and trying to put the hard drive somewhere. So I'm just gonna get this all put in and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so I've got everything in the case and you can see I'm using a small SFX power supply. That's because that's the only one I've got lying around. When I make this a more permanent build, I'll change this off to a standard ATX power supply. And I've got the hard drives laying in the front there. I know this is going to probably trigger some people because they're not actually mounted properly, but this is only a proof of concept build. And when I do this permanently, I'm actually going to be either using three and a half inch drives or actually going to get these mounted properly. So that's all the hardware set up. Now we're going to go into the software setup. So I'm going to be switching over to the screen. Unfortunately, I can't run OBS on this screen because I need to use it to capture the BIOS. So I'm just going to be using my camera to capture the screen to take you through the settings we need to go through in order to be able to get the OS loaded onto this SSD. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to boot this up and jump into the BIOS. Usually it's the delete key, or it could be the F12, it could be the F10, it does depend on the motherboard manufacturer, but I know with this one, it's actually the F12 key. So once we're into the BIOS, firstly we're going to go into the standard CMOS features. This should show us all of the hard drives we have in here. So we have all of the six in, six in here, and this one here, which is the Samsung SSD, this is the one that I'm actually going to be putting the operating system on. So this is where TrueNAS is going to sit. The other ones you can see, these are the five, uh, these are the five spinning disks. These are the one terabytes I'm going to be using to actually make up the NAS. So once we've affirmed that these are all in here, I'm going to pop into the advanced CMOS features and I'm going to click into boot sequence. And I'm just going to make sure that the first boot sequence is going to be the USB because that's where I've actually got the uh, image so I'm going to go and I'm going to select the SSD as boot one. And for boot two, I'm going to put the Samsung SSD. And for the third and for third onwards, I'm going to set these as disabled because I don't, I don't want it booting. We can go ahead and we can hit F10 and then we can save the save and exit. And now this should now boot up to the USB we've got connected with the image of TrueNAS on it. So once we get the install menu pop up, we're going to want to hit number one, which is the boot true NAS installer.
For those of you not used to Linux, this is perfectly normal. You don't really need to worry about too much about what this is doing. This is just showing on screen all the processes it's going through to get the software ready. When it's ready for you to make some kind of entry on screen, it'll do something like this. So we're going to simply go for, we could, this is the menu, so we can either reboot, shut down, go to the shell, or we can install upgrade. Once you've selected the option you want, you just simply hit enter, and it's going to install it. Now this is giving us a list of all of, the, all of the hard drives that we have in our system, and we can see that we have five that are 931.5 gigabytes. That's what one terabyte works out to be in actual gigabytes. And we have the Samsung SSD. This is where we want to store all the operating system. So I'm going to select that by pressing the space bar, which is going to put a little asterisk in the corner, and then I'm going to hit OK. It's giving us the warning that's going to tell us that everything on this drive is going to be, is going to be wiped. It's the usual kind of, uh, this is the usual kind of warning that you get if you're going to try and install any new software or anything at all. So let's hit yes, and it's going to ask us to confirm a root password. This is the root password that you're actually going to use to log on to the true NAS software. So I'm going to set myself a password in this. It doesn't really matter what I'm choosing, so I'm not choosing a particularly tough password because I'm going to be rebuilding this again. Like I said, this is merely just a proof of concept. So we can either boot via UEFI or we can boot via BIOS. Obviously, if you have a more modern machine, so your main board and your processor are much more recent, and much more modern, you would select boot via UEFI. Because this is an old main board and an old processor, I'm actually going to go boot via BIOS because that's guaranteed to work even, even, on, older hard, even on older hardware. It's asking us if we want to create a swap partition. We may as well do that. So now it's actually going through the process of installing the operating system onto the SSD. And this is going to take a little while, so I'm going to spin through this and come right back to you guys. Okay, so now it's installed and it's asking that we remove the install media and then hit the OK button. And now we're going to go with the reboot. Again, you guys don't need to worry too much about this. This is just showing something on screen whilst it's doing all these background processes and getting everything set up and ready to run. Okay, so this is now actually set up and running. I know it doesn't look like that, but you can see in the bottom left hand corner, we can see we have an IP address. This is where we're going to find the web user interface. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch over to another PC and I'm going to be able to record that using OBS. I'm going to go through actually connecting to this and we can actually now set up any kind of shares that we want and publish them locally on our network and we can give access and control access to our users and our user groups. Okay, so I'm back on my main PC now and you'll remember the IP address that he gave us when we actually set up the true NAS on the other computer which you can see actually just, just over there behind me in the corner. Uh, I'm going to navigate to that now. And it's going to tell me that it's an issue connecting to it because it's not private. That's all good. We can continue to there anyway. This is where it's going to ask us for our true NAS username and password. This is the password that we set up when we were doing the installation. The username is root and the password is the password that we created when we set, when we set the system up. And that's going to take us in now to the true NAS dashboard. So this is basically a welcome screen, screen and this is going to give us some information. This is going to give us links to the documentation site, some forums, and it's going to give us like a get started in the top in the bottom right hand corner. So basically this is our system we have up and running. And it's telling me that I have 15 gig of memory uh, and the CPU is an AMX, uh, and, sorry, an AMD FX4100 quad core, which is perfect. So now what we're going to need to do is we're now going to need to go into our storage and we're now going to have to set up all the storage that we're going to be using and then we're going to have to be able to publish it on our system so that we can navigate to it from our other computers. So I'm going to click on the storage in the left hand side and I'm going to click on pools and it says here that we don't have any pools yet because we haven't set any up. 
So I'm going to click on the add button and it's going to be create a new, I'm going to click on a create new pool one. So this is now going to tell me where I can go and select all those one terabyte hard drives and it's going to ask me if I want to create them. So we can see here on the left hand side, here are our five one terabyte drives. Once I've given it a name, I select the disks I want to put into it and it's giving me RAID Z2. which means I'm going to have 2.7 terabytes, which means I can lose one disk before I start losing data. Obviously, you can choose different kind of, uh, you can choose different kind of uh, RAID if you want. Mirror obviously will just give you uh, five copies of the same one. Uh, and if you want to use Stripe, it's going to stripe the data across everything. And if we have, but the, but the downside to this is if you do have a disk failure, you are going to lose data. So I'm going to use RAID Z which is going to give us 3.6 terabytes, which means I can lose one disk before anything actually starts to go wrong. So it's asking me the contents are all going to be deleted. Do I want to confirm it? So I'm going to go ahead and click the pool. It's now going to be formatting all of those 15, all of those five disks in there. And um, I'll come back to you guys when it's done. Okay, so we've now created our pool of disks, which we're going to pull together. This is comprising 3.51 terabytes. So what we're going to do now is actually going to create the share on here, which is going to be the folder that's going to be, or the drive that's going to be available across the network. So I'm going to click on sharing and I'm going to click on Windows shares. And we can see we've got none in here at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and add one in. I'm going to give it, I'm going to put the path in for it. And I'm going to give it a name. TN pool one. And then I'm going to click on submit. And there we go. We now have a uh, TN pool one, which is going to be visible when you browse to the network, browse through the network to this machine. So we're going to go ahead. And, so I've already set up a couple of users here, but I'm going to go ahead and set up a new user just so you guys can see how it's done. So I'm going to click on add, and I'm going to give this give a new user. And I'm just going to call this test user or test. So the username is going to be test. I'm not going to bother putting an email in. I'm going to set up a simple password. Again, I'm not too worried about the security of this because this is actually not going to be around that long. Now what we do is we uh, give it a directory. And if we look in here, we can see we're going to create a directory in the TN pool. And the user has uh, read, write and execute to those. So now we're going to hit the submit button and that's going to create us a new user. So now if we go to our Explorer, we should be able to see in our network we have our TrueNAS. And it's asking us for some credentials. So I'm going to put in the test user credential which I just created. And it's taken us to TN pool. And we can see there are our three folders which we created. And there's our there's our file, uh, our folder which we can put our information in. So there you have it guys. That's a quick and dirty way about how to set up a true NAS uh, home NAS server using some old equipment that you have may have lying around if you're not using it at the moment. Like I said, I'm, this is only a proof of concept for me just to understand the settings a little bit and for me to learn a little bit more about how to set it up and how to configure it properly. I'm going to be making a more permanent solution a little way down the line. And for that, I'm going to be using some, hard, some larger hard drives. I'll be obviously putting it into a case that's a little bit more uh, ventilated and a little bit more permanent. This is, like I say, it's just a proof of concept for me. So if you look in the description below, I'm going to put links in there to the TrueNAS site where you can download your own copy of TrueNAS. I'm also going to put a link in there to Balana Etcher, which is what you're going to need to use to mount the ISO on a USB stick so that you can actually use it as a bootable drive. I'm also going to put a link down there to Ashford PC Builder. Again, big thanks to him for hooking me up with the main board and the CPU for this build. Uh, go check them out if you're looking for a new PC or if you're looking to get any work done on your current PC, go check them out. I hope you found the video useful. I hope it gave you an, an idea about how you could go about building a NAS for your own home computer network if you have one. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you can see when I put more videos up. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you on the next one.